Hi everyone, this is Nick, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make this kind of circular waffle chart or plum pudding chart. Uh, and really it's just this XY scatter plot in a circle. All of these sloths here are one single data point. It's a live chart inside PowerPoint, inside the Excel source that's built in to PowerPoint. And um, this comes from sort of visitor studies data. If you work for places like museums, zoos, aquariums, sometimes if you have a baby animal and you're a zoo, people uh, want to know how many of our visitors come for uh, or visit just to see a specific animal, uh, especially a baby sloth, which is always so wonderful to see. So um, in this case, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna use this plum pudding chart to represent the percentage of visitors who said they came to the zoo specifically to see the baby sloth. And I have this beautiful picture of a baby sloth. Her name is Elsa from the Sloth Institute. I'm gonna link their page below. It's a great organization. I hope you follow them. And then I have my title here, colored in blue, that says 23% of visitors came to see the baby sloth. And then we have this beautiful um, plum pudding chart with the sloth icons there. The blue represent the 23%, and then the gray represent the other, uh, the rest of the visitors. So there's 100 sloths, or there's 100 XY dots plotted uh, in this chart. It's pretty cool. It's kind of engaging, much different than sort of a bar chart or much more um, sort of fun and kind of interactive in that way. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to push escape here, and we're going to get out of this PowerPoint slide. And I'm going to show you how we can make it right inside of PowerPoint. And first, here is the uh, Baby Sloth. Here's the Sloth Institute webpage. Again, I'm going to link them below. It's a great organization. And then here is the DataViz post that I saw uh, that was sort of outlining uh, what a plum pudding chart is and sort of how to make it. And a lot of this, I think, is done in Tableau, but we're going to do this in PowerPoint and Excel. So you can kind of scroll through here and see Lindsay's post here, Plum Pudding What? <laughs> you look at all of the different kinds of variations that she's put here uh, into this guest blog post right here. Pretty cool. I uh, hope you'll go check it out. I'm going to link this uh, uh, DataViz Zen, uh, Viz Zen data uh, in the show notes below too. So the first thing we want to do is go over to our PowerPoint side. Let's start making this chart. We have to do some tweaks on the back end to make this work. So the first thing we're gonna do is insert a chart. We know this is an XY scatter chart. So we're gonna go ahead and just plot that. And this gives us sort of the canned, uh, the, the canned chart values. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to open this data in Excel uh, instead of just this little, little window. If you pop this open, this opens an entire Excel spreadsheet and you can work with your data uh, a little bit more flexibly that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. It's gonna open the entire sheet and I'm gonna drag this over and we'll just maximize this so you can see it. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in just a little bit so you can see the values a little bit better. Now the thing that I wanna do here first is you can see that automatically in built-in charts, it gives you a dynamic Excel table. For our purposes on this chart, I don't think we want it to be dynamic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this to a range so it's just a static Excel workbook. So over here on the table design tab, click that and then click on convert to range. Once you say yes to this, now you can see there's no table design tab that pops up. It's no longer a dynamic table. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna go ahead and insert a column here. This is gonna be my ID column, and we're gonna have these, this is gonna be one through 100. And then on the XY values, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and delete these. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to this other website here by eSpect, and they have already outlined the coordinates for us and how to make uh, 100 circles in a single plot. So all you need to do is go up here where it says show coordinates, and they give you kind of a CSV sort of look at um, all of the coordinates here. This first column is just one through 100, and then these are the X values and the Y values. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to copy this whole row here, I'm gonna right click and copy. We'll go back to our Excel chart. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paste this right in. Now you'll notice that it pastes all three of those columns in one single column. So we actually have to do a little bit of Excel trickery to uh, separate these into three columns. And all we need to do here I'm gonna highlight the entire column A here, go up to the data tab, and we're gonna say text to columns. When we do that, we're gonna click on delimited, and then next, 
and then I want it to separate by space. And you can see it already gives me a little bit uh, of a preview of what that's going to look like. I'm going to say next, and then we'll say finish. Oh, and it says there's already, oh, oh, good. So just, if there's a little error pop up, just click through it and see what happens. But now this has given me all the columns. You see that it also though separated that first ID column. We can go ahead and delete that. And so I'm just going to label these columns ID. And then this is going to be X value and Y value. Okay. So now let's move this over. And what I'm going to do is see what happened in the PowerPoint side. We don't have anything going on right here in the chart just yet. But all we need to do is we're going to right click on the chart, or actually, I'm going to go up here, select data. Your select data source menu pops up. And right here, I'm just going to go ahead and click the X value, and I'm going to say edit. And this is where we have to re edit, uh, repoint to the X and Y values here. So go over here to the X values. We're going to go back to our data source chart right here. And you can see right here, the X values are pointing to this ID column that we don't want. So I'm just going to go ahead and point all the X values here. Push Enter. And then the Y values, we're going to point to right here. Perfect. Now click, click OK. I'm going to click OK here. We're going to close out of this and see what it looks like. Now you can see we have the makings of this scatter plot. Now let's go ahead and see what the um, the x and y axis values are. It looks like they are set to positive 1 and negative 1.2. We want this to be negative 1 to positive 1 on both sets of axes. So let's go ahead and uh, format the axis as we normally do. I'm going to say update this to negative 1 for the minimum, positive 1 for the maximum, and let's go ahead and do that to, this is already, the x-axis is already set to that, but I don't want it to be auto. I want it to sort of make sure that it's forced to be negative 1 to positive 1. Perfect right there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and delete the axis now. We don't need these. We don't need the axis values. We don't need the chart title. We don't need any of the grid lines, so I'm going to go ahead and delete those. And now we have this little circle chart here. Now, what we're going to need to do now is get the icons for the sloth. So what we need to do is go up to the Insert tab, go to the Icon button, and I'm just going to type in sloth and see what pops up. We have this nice full color sloth. I'm going to like that. I'm going to insert that here, and I'm going to duplicate this. I want two different colors. So this one I'm going to turn blue. This one we're going to be a light gray see this color right here, I think. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to copy this, copy the gray icon, click on one of the dots here, which will, will select all of the dots, and I'm just going to say Control-V to paste. We're going to paste them in. And when we do that, we get this big mess here, but all we need to do is update the marker size uh, to be a little bit smaller. So what we're going to do over here, Format Data Series over here on the Paint Bucket, let's go to the Marker. And then we're going to, instead of built-in, I'm going to select circle. And then we can update the size of the circle. So I'm going to say this to 25. Now we have 100 gray sloths. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and delete the gray sloth. We don't need that anymore. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to add a new series to this chart with just the 23 dots uh, that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the chart, edit the data. And the data source menu pops up. But what I need is to have the, um, the series menu pop up. So in that case, what I like to do is go up to the Chart Design tab and click on Select Data. When you click on Select Data, oops, not working. <laughs> Usually, I'm going to close out of this. Let's just go right from the, from the source here under Data. If we select this data, there we go. The Select Data Source menu pops up. And what we need to do is add a new series. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add. Now it doesn't matter where I point the series name. I'm just going to point this to a blank cell right here. The x values, what we're going to want, I'm going to move this over so that it's a little bit longer. The x values, we just want 20, uh, 23. So I'm just going to drag all the way down to row to ID number 23 here. Push Enter. And in the Y values, I'm going to push uh, 
go up the 23, 1 through 23 is going to be included in the Y values. We'll push Enter. We'll click OK. All right, now I have these two series of data here. I'm going to click OK and see what happens. And now you can see down here, I have these new series of data, these dots that are showing up over the sloth. So let's go ahead and we're going to click Copy the Blue Sloth. Click on the green dots that showed up on the second series. Control V to paste. And now again, we have this big sloth. We want to put that down to 25 so that they're overlapping those gray. So go over here to the uh, Format Data Series menu, Marker Fill. And then remember what we're going to do, oops, under the Marker Fill, Marker Options. We're going to click on Circle and then update this to 25 size. And now you can see we have the blue sloths overlapping the gray sloths, and that's 23% of the sloths that are on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and delete the icon. We don't need that anymore. Now, one of the things that I really um, liked is that on my first version, I had all the sloths at the top. And all we need to do to make that happen over here is resort the data on the back end so that it's uh, going, instead of from 1 to 100, we're going from 100 to 1. So all we need to do here is right click, Edit data, the, the data source menu pops up again. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna open the full Excel file. This gives me a little bit more options. And what I'm gonna do is on this first row here, I'm gonna add data filters. So add data filters. And now what we're gonna do is sort this from not smallest to largest, but instead largest to smallest. Largest to smallest. Now let's go ahead and X out of this. And now you can see that my slots have moved from the bottom to the top. And that's closer to the title, so I think it'll be easier for people to sort of recognize that that blue is representing um, the 23% of visitors who came to see the baby sloth. A really cool chart type in PowerPoint and Excel that you can make using some of those resources. Again, I'm going to put um, the Viz Data Zen, the Viz Zen Data uh, blog post in the show notes below. Go check them out and subscribe. Uh, the other coordinates, the XY coordinate site by eSpect, I'm going to put that in the show notes too. And then, of course, the link to the Sloth Institute, where I hope you visit and I hope uh, you go and adopt a sloth or donate to an organization that's doing some great work. I hope you really like this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to hit the subscribe button every time uh, you hit that bell next to it. Each time I post a new video, tutorial in data design, Excel, PowerPoint, or Word, uh, you'll get notified when that video drops. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a great time making it for you, and I will see you all next time. Thank you.